All right. Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. So today, guys, I'm joined by a special guest, Rank Man. And Rank, we're going to be discussing about Jurgen Klopp, man. Jurgen Klopp is legacy, of course, as you guys know. He's announced he's going to leave Liverpool at the end of the season. And I know we're kind of a bit late with this, you know, because obviously the Premier League season has kind of finished a few weeks ago. But, you know, Rank and I have been pretty busy. And Rank, man, uh, thank, you for, thank, thank you for coming on, man. We appreciate it. So I will, uh, how are you feeling? Um, I'm feeling good. Um, if it's about uh, Liverpool, I have mixed feelings because obviously uh, it's hard to, for an era like this to come to an end. It's been a lot of years with Jurgen uh, as the head of coach. And now we are kind of transitioning into a new era and we are just going to have to see if it's going to be anything like this or if we are going to expect something different now with Arne Slot at the head. Yeah. I think uh, let, let's first discuss our initial reaction, which you kind of already did, but I guess we'll make this own segment. Um, so my initial reaction is when I saw the news, because obviously I think I because I think the news broke out when I was sleeping. I was probably sleeping during the time, and obviously because you know the UK, you know I'm in US, USA is like five hours ahead, so I, I didn't wake up to the news. I kind of woke up to the news, and I saw that Europe was leaving. It, it made me surprised, like he's leaving. But then when I really thought about it, kind of took some time, you know, because obviously when you wake, when, when you first see it, you react very differently to later on. Because obviously, you know, and I think when I later on realized that he's been here for so long, I think, I think he's been here for so long. Like uh, how many years has he been a rank? I think it's been like yeah, well, he was, he was appointed in 2015, October 2015. So it was, yeah, almost nine years, almost nine years, eight nine and a half years. or something. Almost nine. Yeah, nine, nine years is insane. And let's be real. Most managers don't serve nine years. Most managers serve like two or three seasons at most, maybe mm -hmm. four. Most managers don't stay that long. And the fact that he stood there for nine years is a long time. So, I mean, I mean, uh, Rank, man, how, how, give me your initial reaction when you saw the news. So, yeah, my initial reaction was pretty similar to yours in that I was not expecting it. I think it was mostly that nothing had been leaked about it. Like no one had said ahead of time, oh, club is leaving at the end of the season. It was that it was such a well-kept secret that when it broke out, uh, when it was announced, it was a big shock, obviously. And I didn't expect it also because um, Liverpool were doing great. Like the results were there uh, halfway through the season. Uh, we were doing pretty good in the Europa League and in the Premier League. So I was like, okay, so it's very likely that club is going to stay, but no. Um, and, but after that, yeah, I kind of thought about it a little bit. And yeah, it's been a long time. Often, oftentimes when we think about footballers and managers, we forget that these are also real people. Uh, they are yeah. human beings. Uh, they are not machines that can do this forever, forever without stop. And just for Jürgen as a person, I'm sure that uh, he's had a wonderful time with Liverpool, that he's made a lot of great memories, that he loves the fans, he loves the club. But eventually you get tired of doing the same over and over again and having those expectations and having to work so much uh, because it's a very demanding job. Uh, there's a lot of pressure and I don't think there's anybody who can take that that's all on themselves for that long time and yeah i understand that he kind of needed a break he he needed to stop managing and just try to focus a bit more on his life so it was a completely understandable step to take by him and i think it was also very responsible that he announced it midway through the season so that liverpool didn't have to go find a new manager at the end of the season and rush things, basically. Liverpool were able to take their time choosing who they wanted. And I think that that was also a, a very good, um, a very good, a, a very good action from Jurgen to kind of announce it halfway through the season instead of just dropping the bomb at the end of the season, right? You know, and there's also this thing is that, you know, kind of with like um, player, people is that, you don't. You want to leave when you're at the best. You don't want to leave when you're. You don't want to leave when you should not stay that long. You know. And do you think like? Do you think Klopp is feeling that? Hey, I've did the best I can. If I stay longer, it's gonna have worse. Be worse in my legacy. Like, do you think he was thinking that to himself? 
I, I personally, I don't think so. I think that uh, there was a real possibility uh, with how Liverpool was looking that we would have won possibly more trophies with Klopp. Uh, I don't know which kind of trophies or which quality, if it was going to be like an FA Cup, another Premier League is looking unlikely with uh, how Man City are looking, nor Champions League also unlikely, but you never know, right? Um, I feel like we could have won more with Klopp, but it's just that he kind of wanted to take a rest. I, I don't think it had any, I don't think he was being selfish and thinking about his legacy or anything. And yeah, it was just a decision that he said to make for his life. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I don't know why people, whoever believes that, believes that. I, I think it's blasphemous. But you know, I just wanted to address, see what you feel. Okay, now let's move uh, to let's move to the achievements, man. So the achievements. So let's go look at it. So I'm gonna pull up the uh, Wikipedia page. Uh, let me just uh, pull up the honors right here. So honors right here. Uh, if you pull this up, hope you can see my screen. So these are the honors right here. So it's a Premier League one, Premier League. Let me actually zoom in. It's a little bit small. <laughs> yeah, I zoom in right here. Okay, okay. Maybe I zoomed in a bit too much, but I think we got it right here. So honors. So he's got a Premier League. He's got a FA Cup, Football League Cup, Carabao Cup, two ones, and the two trophies, and then Community Shield, Champions League, UEFA Super Cup, Club World Cup, and uh, UEFA Europa League runner-up. So. How many trophies are that? So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine trophies. Nine trophies. And you, you, you've been here for nine seasons, right? Um, well, kind of eight and a half because he joined halfway through uh, 15, 16. So eight seasons. Okay, say. eight seasons. So nine trophies in eight seasons. And that's actually pretty solid, I would say. Uh, would you agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree that he's that is a, a very solid uh, achievement. Um, but also, you have to put uh, things into context here because, yeah. um, you know, uh, maybe this is something that we're going to discuss later. But when Club took over, uh, Liverpool weren't in a great spot and we hadn't been in a good spot for a long, long time. Uh, we're kind of we're kind of gonna discuss that later, but looking at things into context, people often say that uh, Klopp underachieved at Liverpool because he should have won more trophies. We see that we came runners up in the Europa League in in his first season, and that we lost two Champions League finals as well, and that we came in second in the Premier League like three times. And they and these people are saying, oh, he came second so many times, he should have won more. It was a letdown, obviously, but putting things into context, I, I think that Klopp achieved great things with this club and just all of those trophies, each and every single one has a lot of value, especially, obviously, the, the Champions League and the Premier League, I think, are going to be the standouts. The Champions League, because it's the best trophy of them all, and the Premier League, it, it has that added value that Liverpool hadn't won the Premier League before. Obviously, we won many um, English first division titles but ever since uh it became the premier league liverpool had never won it until that one in 19 and 20. so those were like the two big standouts for club and put into context he he achieved a lot with with this club and just uh it was an amazing tenure the one he had yeah and then obviously people are also going to bring up maybe he could have won the, 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 the premier league thing is that you're going up against Pep Guardiola, who, in my opinion, I don't know if you agree with this, Frank. He is the best league manager of all time, in my opinion. Yeah. I don't think there's any other manager that has won that many amount of league titles. I think he's only lost two league titles, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. um, which is actually insane, which is actually yeah. an incredible achievement. And one of them is this one, right? Like 1920 Premier League. Yeah. And, and yeah, yeah, bringing up to that, because uh, we had two seasons, uh, especially the one on 97 points uh, where we didn't win the league because Man City got 98. 97 points wins the Premier League in every season except that one, the one we won, and the Man City 100 points. Any of those three seasons, be besides those three, 97 points wins the league easily. And it was just extremely unlucky that we got 97 points and we didn't win the league. 
uh, because we were going up against a monster that is uh, Pep's Man City. In, in another one, we got uh, 92 points and they got 93. So it, it was like a very heartbreaking fashion. But Liverpool were always competing. We were always among the best. And that yeah. also has a lot of value, even if people said, oh, but did you win? No, but being there also has value competing. There are many clubs who don't even compete. Uh, and I think that being always at the is. top, we're not going to bring names, uh, but, but being always there at the top is, is very important, competing. And yeah, it was just unlucky that club had to be uh, contemporary to a uh, league beast like is the Guardiola, basically. Yeah, and the thing is like, generally 90 because most teams that win the league is usually 80 points usually you don't see a team have to buy more than 90 points to win the league usually and the fact that manchester city kept doing it on a regular consistent basis was something that we hadn't seen in the premier league before i think right we hadn't seen mm -hmm. a team consistently do that every season right yeah no so, never never like 90 breaking 90 points uh the arsenal invincible season got exactly 90 points so like yeah it, Liverpool on 97 and 92 points, like we got with club, wins the league against the invincible season. But uh, <laughs> against the against Man City, Pep's Man City, it, it wasn't enough. And that that also kind of shows how amazing Pep is at league football and how he's completely unstoppable there. And you have to do unreal things to beat him. And I think yeah, it's yeah. it's really cool. Uh, speaking from club's perspective to at least have beaten him once because otherwise we will be talking about seven man city league titles in a row oh, so like, geez, seven in a row is, oh man that's that's crazy but I, but yeah i mean um and then obviously let's quickly talk about the champions league of, of course uh the champions league it's a bit kind of uh, underwhelming when people are going to look at to say that but we have to keep in mind most teams don't win a lot of champions League. it's really rare you see a team win a uh, lot of champions are going to uh, spam a short years. The only club that can really do that is Real Madrid, and they're like the kings mm -hmm. of the cha they're the kings of the Champions League. I mean, they just won the record 15th one a few days ago. So, like, yes. and remember, two of those two of those losses came against uh, Real Madrid. In my opinion, Both they're the losses, best Champions yeah. team of all time. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I think. I mean, well, what do you think of that? Do you think uh, Liverpool underachieved in Europe, or do you think just do you just just think that uh, Real Madrid is just too good? I, I think. Oh. Yeah. I, I think it's a bit of both because um, when you look at that first uh, Champions League final we had in 17-18, um, it was a lot of uh, unfortunate circumstances. We had uh, Sergio Ramos injuring Salah at the start of the game. Um, obviously, uh, Real Madrid go ahead with that Benzema goal when Carius kind of gives him the ball and Sadio Mane equalizes. And then Bale scores two incredible goals. Uh, I, I think the first one was the one where Karius kind of lets it slip, and the second one, the second one that Bale scores is the bicycle kick. So that one, I feel like it was those unfortunate circumstances: first Salah getting injured, and then uh, Karius having those mistakes that really affected his career as a whole. And but also because Real Madrid were just really, really good and there was nothing to do about that. And then in 21-22, I mean, that was just the season where Real Madrid were very much destined to win the Champions League because there's no other way of explaining the amazing road that they had to the final and to winning it. Um, because in that game also, we had so many chances. We hit the post and Courtois made so many amazing saves. Uh, if you look at it, we should have won that game. Obviously, in a final, it's not about oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's about doing it. Um, I, I think that we were by far the better team, but it was just not meant to be. Real Madrid just have that heritage, and when you don't take your chances against them, they, they are going to punish you, and that's exactly what they did. Um, and I don't know if you want to talk about the one that we actually won, because it's kind of depressing to talk about those finals. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I guess you could quickly talk about. It. Obviously, um, it's great. Uh, obviously, I'm not. I'm gonna be kind of. Obviously, I was kind of angry, but you know, you know, I'll let you. We gotta talk about it. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean that that Champions League in in 1819, it was uh, something special in in the way that uh, things transpired. Obviously, you could say it was a bit lucky that we didn't have to uh, face Real Madrid. Thank you, Ajax. <laughs> but. <laughs> It was, yeah, it was a special Champions League for sure. Um, I don't remember which group were we in. 
kind of oh we were in a group with PSG and yeah I, call it I don't remember the letter I, I don't remember the letter I know you guys were at Napoli I think PSG yeah, and Red Star Belgrade Red Star Belgrade and we qualified over Napoli um on on goal scored like we barely made yeah, the round of 16. it I was think you guys scored like a last minute winner right yeah yeah we, we barely made the round of 16 and it was just meant to happen and then um it was just the the Anfield fortress because we were able to get um a win against Bayern Munich obviously in the round of 16 then Porto in the quarterfinals and then I mean the semi-finals against Barcelona is obviously going to be uh the, sta okay, so the standout it. moment of that Champions League because uh it was a, an incredible tie from both sides uh in the Camp Nou I think we played a fantastic game and we didn't manage to score and we somehow lost 3-0 because um Messi and Suarez were too good simply put there was nothing yeah. we could do even with how good we were that game um and then going into the second leg at Anfield many people were doubting if we could actually do it I had a little bit of faith I, I was like you know what we could do it but but I was very cautious about it because I was because seeing the first leg I was like we can score three goals past Barcelona but can we keep a clean sheet because Messi is just too good. My my worry was that we were not gonna be able to keep a clean sheet, um, but we did, and it was an an insane comeback, uh, a brace by both uh, Divo Corigi and Jorginho Vinaldum uh, for that four 0 in Anfield. Yeah, and then obviously uh, that final at the Wanda Metropolitano against uh, Tottenham. <laughs> which a, a lot of people say that it was boring. It was a pretty boring final, but. I think that it was pretty commendable that you know we got that early lead and we we never let it slip we we kept a very good defense and we closed out the game in the end and yeah another champions league for liverpool the first champions league for club as well because he hadn't won it before at either Mainz or borussia dortmund obviously um so that was a really good achievement for him and it was the sixth champions league for liverpool the most in england uh, so yeah, it, it was an insane achievement, uh, an insane run, and one of the greatest moments for club, for sure. Yeah, and then one thing to add there to the Champions League thing, the Liverpool when they won the six, it was like it was like the two unsung heroes, Origi and Wijnaldum, because I believe I believe Salah was out for the game, I think. And I think Firmino. Firmino was also out. Firmino and yeah, Salah were both out for the second leg against Barcelona, so that yeah, was like that... made it all, almost impossible to make the comeback because we needed to score at least three goals. And yeah, and after and that, it, keep a clean sheet. So yeah, and I, I hate to say this, but I'm going to say this right now. It almost feels like justice was served because we didn't deserve to make the final. Because I agree mm -hmm. with Rank, we we shouldn't have kept a clean sheet at first. Like we only kept a clean sheet because it's the cap now atmosphere. <laughs> That's probably why. Yeah, That's the reason why. But yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. for Liverpool, man, I think they because like I said, like I was saying earlier, it's hard to win multiple Champions League in that short span of years. Like many clubs. It's just hard, like you know, because Champions League is it's not about it's about it's about moments, right? And you yeah. know, the thing is, like Champions League is so unpredictable. Anything can happen in the Champions League. You know, it, it it's not it's it's really hard, and only a few clubs can win so many Champions Leagues. And I think the fact that Liverpool were able to win a Champions League, the Spam Club era, was fantastic. You know, you have yeah. to give it up to club. And then yeah, I guess we can touch on the. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, and also like make two finals on top of it. Like, besides yeah. Real Madrid over the last few years, uh, we've been the other club that has made multiple finals, and also Man City, I guess, in because they lost to Chelsea in 2021. Uh, but yeah, the, there are not many clubs that can make consecutive, or not consecutive, but that many Champions League finals, yeah, yeah, Champions League finals. In, in a short amount of time. So it was also. Um, amazing from club to always be competing at the top level against uh whatever opposition we faced yeah and then i guess we touched upon europe league well briefly of course europe league that was probably painful loss for you um losing to I mean, sevilla but, the europe but we were always going to lose to sevilla in europa league like there, there's nothing yeah, yeah. we can do <laughs> they're like that. the kings of europe league man <laughs> yeah i think that it was uh commendable that in his first season we were able to make it all the way to the final uh, you know because in that season it was very rocky for Liverpool. We were like mid-table in the Premier League and we had qualified to the Europa League. And 
you know, we make it to, to the final. We had that insane game in the quarterfinals against Dortmund because it was it was also club against his former team. And <laughs> we were like three win three one down in Anfield and we had to score three goals in the second half. And we make that comeback. We we score the, the fourth in also in stoppage time. It was um it was Lovren who scored the winner there. And yeah, to make the semifinals, the semifinals we beat uh, Villarreal, and yeah, in the final against Sevilla, there was nothing we could do. But the highlight of that uh, Europa League was that game against Dortmund in Anfield because the the scenes went crazy with with the comeback, one of the many comebacks that we pulled uh, with club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I guess we had touched uh, quickly touched upon the club World Cup. I think you, um, the 2019. I think it was against which? Was I think it was against the Brazilians. It was Flamengo. It was Flamengo. Oh, Flamengo. Time. Sorry, yes. I thought it was Palmeiras. <laughs> it was Flamengo. Mm-hmm. Flamengo. So, and then obviously Super Cup was against Chelsea, and then you got the FA Cup and Community Shield. So, you know, a lot of trophies, man. Nine trophies. You know, many managers cannot say they won that many amount of trophies at one club. You know, most managers cannot say that. So, I think mm-hmm. the fact that club achieved nine trophies is commendable. Anything to add before we move to our next topic? Um. Well, in, in you mentioned the, the Super Cup against Chelsea. Like in the finals, we always beat Chelsea. That, that we never lost to Chelsea. So at least that's, <laughs> that, that, that's, that's a good that's thing. True, that's true. <laughs> that, 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 that is true. I'm oh, sorry, I'm muted. Uh, let's talk about how Klopp obviously uh, uh, how he changed Liverpool. Yes, yes, because that's something that mm-hmm. I had kind of touched upon before. Um, obviously, Brendan Rodgers had that uh, that season where we almost win the league. It, it looked like it would be the time where we were finally going to win the Premier League with, obviously, with Coutinho, with Henderson, with Gerrard, with Luis Suarez. Uh, it was looking great for us. We were top of the league for so long. And it came that, that game at Anfield against Chelsea and the famous, we let it slip, right? And it was heartbreaking. And the season after that, uh, Brendan Rodgers obviously off to a, a really bad start in the league. And, and a few matches, match days in, he, he got sacked. Um, also because we were in the Europa League, it was a, like a disappointing campaign there. And, and in comes Klopp. And he kind of changes everything. Like, like I mentioned, his first season, we make the the Europa League final. I believe we were like uh, 13th in the Premier League when he arrived and we finished the season like 7th or 8th, I think. So it was like a a big improvement ever since he arrived. And the thing that I always say is that, you know, Liverpool is to me the biggest club in England. But before Klopp arrived, it didn't feel like it because we were a team more accustomed to being in the Europa League than in the Champions League. It was very hard for us to make top four and with Klopp uh, arriving top four was like a benchmark we were always making the the Champions League uh, not only making the Champions League we were often pushing for the title and in the Champions League we were always making deep runs so the the thing that I appreciate the most about Klopp is that he made Liverpool feel like Liverpool again uh, feel like a club that that is always competing always at the top and um, yeah it, uh, that's my my main takeaway from that i mean look at the look this was the first team this was the first team he came with his first season Sturridge, mm-hmm. La Lago, moreno moreno torre love klein mingulay i mean Look what he's and look what the team he's built. You know, Alice uh, and Adam, Salah. Adam Lalana is crazy. Like Adam Lalana is, is insane. That's yeah, like I like look at the amount of Van Dyke, you know. Like he took this team and and managed to keep some of the players and got all the way to this. Like this is what he came with work with. I mean, most this team is average, man. <laughs> yeah, and then you know the, the goalkeeper became Allison, the back four became uh, obviously, added Van Dijk, and on the left, on the fullbacks, we added Trent and Robertson. The midfield, uh, I, I guess, he started uh, Henderson more, and later on, we got other players like Vinaldum, who was very important in in that 2019 Champions League. And the front three became 
uh, the the one that we got used to loving with Firmino, with Salah, with Mane. So yeah, the whole team changed. Obviously, it was a lot down to the signings, but they were his signings, right? He was the one to yeah. to change the team because it's it's not like Liverpool weren't spending before. It was that we we were making the wrong signings and Klopp kind of sent us into the right direction. And yeah, the team improved massively under him. Yeah. All right, so now it's kind of similar to this one. Um, how did he adapt? Because obviously, a lot of the players at Liverpool had, obviously, a lot of them, some of them left. You know, obviously, uh, Mane left. You had to replace him. And obviously, Coutinho left. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other notable players that left. That yeah, Firmino. Um, Firmino. Henderson eventually left. Yeah, as well. Yeah. Uh, Lovren yeah, left. Lovren left. So, yeah, yeah um, Klopp has had to change his formation multiple times, but even he adapted great because even with the change of, of names, the, the idea remained the same. The formation, uh, that kind of 4-3-3 remained the same. And the style with the geek and pressing was always there, always trying uh, to keep possession and when we lose position instantly try to get it back um, because club's teams just play better when when we have the ball so it's very hard for a club team to play without having the ball so we always want to be the one dominating and when we don't have the ball just try to get it back as quick as possible which is something that i really really like uh, it takes a lot of energy and it's very intense and it allows teams who are not prepared for it, very little counterplay. And yeah, it was really effective. You only have to look at the results. Uh, the only team who was able to stop us was Man City and Real Madrid, basically, which are like two cases, uh, separate cases, because one is unstoppable in the league and the other is it's unstoppable in the Champions League. So um, yeah, it was very, very effective in the way that he adapted to the names that he had over the years. Yeah. And let's be real, Liverpool don't have as much finance. Uh, they don't have like as much money as you know your other big elite clubs. You know they don't have as much money as like you know Real Madrid, Manchester City, and you know the other clubs. So I think what he's been able to work with has been amazing. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I, I kind of don't want to bring money into the conversation, but because it's not like Liverpool don't spend. We we definitely spend oh yeah, I'm not saying they don't spend, but, but it, it's not like spend. other players. It's not like other teams that, that don't really uh, use a lot of money and just kind of have to uh, adapt to whatever they can afford. Uh, Liverpool can afford players, but we definitely go for another approach. We don't go for the big stars. We go yeah. we to go always for the players that he thought would fit his system the best. And it's I sensible. think that, that that's the main difference. Yeah. Yeah, it's sensible, sensible signings. Not like just any superstars, you know. And that's also another thing that uh, we also want to bring up is that a lot of the players that he bought weren't really world class before he weren't world class at their previous clubs. Like yes. Mane, Salah, they were like average players, or maybe like decent yeah. at best. But they Salah were, like, was a Chelsea reject, like that. That was about it. Yeah. So you know that just shows how much how much of an impact he's had. Now our final topic for today is going to be uh, the uh, what is it called the best and worst moments. So this is this will be interesting, Rank. So what moments stood out to you best? Obviously, I think we kind of already talked about the best moments. You know, obviously, uh, the Champions yeah. League win and the worst mo uh, and then obviously the Premier League win as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, adding up to the best moments, well, obviously, uh, the comeback against Barcelona, the comeback against Dortmund, uh, that we all, both of those we already talked about. Um, the comeback against uh, Aston Villa on our way to winning the league, where we kind of had to to win in in Birmingham to to kind of stay top of the Premier League, and we were two nil down and managed to to make a comeback uh, in the dying minutes as well. Uh, another comebacks like against Fulham in the last um, EFL Cup in the Carabao Cup where we were uh, down in, in London as well, and we kind of had to make a comeback there. Um, well, against uh, Newcastle in St. George's Park, where we were down to uh, 10 men, and Darwin Nunez scores a brace. Uh, so 
those were some of the comebacks at least that popped into my mind uh, on top of obviously the the title wins right yeah uh worst moments <laughs> oh. worst moments is a bit more difficult to choose from because obviously um the the finals that we lost uh in the, in the Europa League and in the Champions yeah. League are going to be the ones that uh, stand out the most but you know it, it's not really it, it's a really bad moment when it happens but when you look back at it it's like it, is it really a bad moment because it it, it really it really feels bad but it, it's not a, it's not bad to reach a final right uh, so yeah that's why i have a hard time like categorizing into bad moments um it was um a bit of a bad moment in that uh last season we had where we couldn't make top four um uh, yeah that was uh very disappointing because we were used to contesting for the league and with uh, a few players leaving we were not able to make uh top four and had to play in the europa league last season uh that was a bit of a a bit of a letdown season but you know it happens it's hard to stay at the top every single year uh I think that that's also yeah. one the sentiment that club had when deciding to leave that it's hard to keep up that intensity the whole time and i don't know another bad moments were i i think the the main game that stands out as a bad moment is the 5-2 loss to real madrid at anfield uh because oh yeah that was bad that was, that was a game that you know we were winning 2-0 and we had like this sensation that maybe we can defend this lead and then go to the Bernabeu and kind of do something and maybe we can finally get revenge on Real Madrid and then it, Real Madrid kind of said nope uh Benzema showed up big time um and yeah it was uh a, a hard game to watch and it basically get, left us with no hope going into the second leg at the Bernabeu so I think that was a, a bad moment definitely and after that I don't know it was a bit of um it left a bad taste on my mouth uh, that we couldn't beat uh united this season that it was something that i kind of wanted to do we got two draws in the in the premier league and then we lost in, with them in the fa cup so yeah it felt a bit bad not being able to beat united because that is also a great memory beating united 7-0 that was one of the best oh yeah, games yeah. That i watched with liverpool so um we were always the ones to to humble united and yeah speaking on the worst moments i think it's it left a bad taste on my mouth that we couldn't beat united. oh yeah another 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 big one is when you guys won five one at old Trafford. Uh, that was crazy yeah 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 and that season we did the double we we beat them four nil at anfield and then five nil at old Trafford. so it was i know on aggregate uh, that's yeah crazy. nine nine nil on aggregate against united in a season it was it was insane yeah, was that like the first time you guys had done like the league double over in Manchester right? in a long time? Um, in a long time, maybe it, it was definitely not the first time, but yeah, yeah, I, I know it's not I'm the first sure time, that, like in a long time. I'm sure that we, I don't think we did it under when they were under Fergie, so I think that it must have been a long, long time. Yeah, then obviously, the uh, one last uh, one question was so was that when you guys went to the Europa League, was that like the first season Liverpool went to the Europa League with Klopp? Um, like well, you guys apart, from his, uh, apart from his debut season, right? Yeah. Um, I think so, because after we played in the Europa League in, in his first season, uh, we were always uh, making the Champions League. So, yeah, it was it was the second time uh, with club uh, at the Europa League. But, you know, it, it was disappointing how it ended against Atalanta. Obviously, Atalanta would then go on to win the entire thing. But it was uh, disappointing to, especially to lose at Anfield. Uh, so, yeah, we, yeah, I feel like we could have done something against them, but it was just not meant to be. We got outplayed, and it is what it is. At least we lost to the eventual champions. <laughs> we can. That, that's how we cope, right? We, we lose to the best. We only <laughs> lose to City. We lost to Real Madrid, and in the Europa League, we lost to Atalanta and to Sevilla. We lose to the best, you know. We we never. We never lose to some scrub. We lose to the very best. <laughs> that, that, that is a good point. That is a good point. But yeah, man, like I said, Jurgen Klopp, man. Yeah, like, let's, uh, it's, he's, he's going to be... Actually, I want to ask you one last question before we round off. Is Jurgen Klopp 
the best Liverpool manager of all time? One of the uh one of the best, yes. One of one of the best it has to be. This is something that I had not thought about. Um I saw it when when Silva posted it, I think yesterday, that Liverpool across its entire history has only had 22 managers. 22 managers in like over, over 130 years of history. Wow. That's like uh, the average Liverpool manager stays for six years. Like th that's insane. Um, yeah. So Liverpool hasn't had a, a lot of managers uh, compared to other clubs. Um, but it, it's hard for me to say uh, best best manager when there's there are others like Kenny Dalglish when you have to take into account uh, Bob Spassley. Um, I, I think that best Liverpool manager of all time, I wouldn't go that far, but I would say top three, top four, definitely, because just just the doing the double, like the the Champions League and the Premier League is something that very few managers in any club managed to do. And doing it for Liverpool, it was uh, insane. So he kind of has to be in that conversation. Yeah, I think uh, is, you would put him like, uh, like let's say we had to give a number <laughs> to like, um, would you would you put like top three or like top five? Um, top five, top five, I, I would say because okay. you. I kind of have to take into account Bob, Bob Spassley, uh, Bill Shankly, and Kenny Dalglish, and I guess you can even have you even have to consider Joe Fagan. So, I I think he's either fourth or, or fifth, I would say. So yeah, he, he's there. He's definitely... but it, it's just that those years, like in the seventies and the eighties, you know, it's hard to beat multiple Champions Leagues and multiple uh, league titles, like. Because Klopp, as great as he was, he got one of each. And you could say that he deserved to get more. Um, if he had won, let's say, like um, two Champions Leagues and three Premier Leagues, maybe we have an, another discussion. Um, I, I really value what he did for the club. And, but yeah, to get into that top three, you kind of have to be on another level, I feel like. Yeah, I, I think top five is fair. I think top five is fair. But yeah, I mean, like I said, man, it's going to be interesting to see how Liverpool do. Uh, post club, you know, Arna Slot, he's at the helm. And um, mm -hmm. uh, like, uh, let, let's be real. I don't think Arna Slot's going to surpass Jurgen Klopp. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it's a very uh, tall order to kind of surpass what Klopp has done. But we'll see. We'll see um, how he how he manages his transfers now um, after the, the Copa America and the Euros. Uh, what kind of players he decides to bring in, what his style is. And we're going to see because we are back in the Champions League as well. So we have that to look forward to. And I think we are in part one for the draw as well. So yeah, we yeah. should kind of get a, a kind draw, hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> um, and yeah, yeah we, we, we are just going to see how it goes. I expect uh, to make top four next season. I'm not going to be uh, ambitious and say we have to contest for the league immediately because that's you have to give time to managers. But yeah, I feel yeah, like... Course. Make it top four should be a, a realistic aspiration for us next season. Yeah, then Champions League, I guess, get to the quarterfinals. I think that's realistic. Yeah, kind of give it your best go. I feel like uh, get out of the group and see who we face in the knockouts. Um, actually, there's no group stage. The format has changed. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, um, it's a bit more complicated now. Yeah, it's a bit more complicated. But yeah, kind of make the knockouts and, and see how, how we do there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, I think we're going to round up here. Hope you guys have enjoyed today's uh, video. Uh, like I said, go, please subscribe to Ranks, uh, Ranks Talks channel. I will leave the link in the description below. You know, he's our South American correspondent. He's been covering the Copa Luis Dura, Sudamericana. You know, obviously going to cover the Argentina, the Copa America, and also Copa America in general, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah. The idea is to cover the Copa America in general. Now, um, we are um, less than three weeks away from the Copa America, so it's going to be very yes, exciting. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited as well, man. I'm I need a break from club football. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, uh, like I said, please subscribe to him. He does a lot of good content. And, yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy. Uh, please let me let us know in the comments below if there's any other talking points we could have brought up in the video. I think we discussed about the main talking points, right? Yeah. 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 I think so. 
yeah, yeah. So hope you guys did enjoy. Please remember to like and subscribe. And yeah, peace out.